In this video, we'll find out what hardware is installed on your FreeBSD system, how to examine boot logs to find out what hardware was detected during boot, how FreeBSD tools can be used to troubleshoot and change parameters of devices, and how to manipulate kernel modules. Some of the built-in tools used are dmessage, camcontrol, devinfo, pciconf, KLD stat, KLD load, and KLD unload. Many of the tools shown in this video are cross-purpose in nature, so a utility that allows some form of hardware manipulation can also be used to gather information about any devices attached. But be careful with some of the commands that have a lot of switches such as cam control. Do your research before using them on your system. There are a lot of tools for FreeBSD that helps you find out what's in your system. Hopefully I can cover most of them. I probably will miss some of them out, and if I do, and you can think of any, please list them in the comment section down below. Now the first one is Geom, and as you can see, there's not that many options. You can put the class, the command, and a few options afterwards. Or hyphen P, provider name, or hyphen T. So for this example, we're going to use Geom, disk, and list. Disk being the class and the command being list. Right, and it will list the attached uh, disk on your system. It provide uh, the user information like sector size. It will give you a description, the actual name of the drive. It will tell you the capacity and the identification. And if you want an individual drive specification only, then you can put geom disk list, then that specific drive. So ADA0 is the, the boot drive on this system. And if you want to list uh, a particular piece of information from all of the drives, then just geom disk list, pipe it to grep, and then put in the search term, say for instance, media size. And it will list all the media sizes, all the drive sizes attached to your system. That's actually pretty useful. And you can change media size into, oh, I don't know, a description. So a list of all the manufacturers, all the drive types. So that's not too bad if you want to make sure that you buy like and like future hard drives and you're not sure what's actually in your system. Very good. Next one up is cam control. Now there are a lot of options in cam control. Um, you can sanitize and format, change the idle, sleep, power mode, automatic power mode, um, security, you name it, you can probably change it. Now, some of these you want to be careful in changing. You don't want to be just blindly changing some parameters on your drives or a system because then you'll You'll probably lock your system up. But in this instance, we're actually just going to be using DevList. We'll bring up drive information a bit like Geom did. Uh, with a few more bits of information like, uh, you know, say for instance, what is attached to ADA0, ADA1, plus the dev paths it's on. Next up is Gpart. Again, there's quite a few options. It's not as many as cam control. But we, in this one we can use G part show and it'll show it like the other ones what's attached to the system but this one will only show you your hard drive and the thing is about this what makes this particularly interesting and and it's useful if you plug in say for instance if you plug in a USB stick and you are not sure how it's formatted you now if you put a uh, USB stick in and issued G part show uh, you know DA0 it will bring up whether or not it's a Linux formatted uh, drive or a Windows formatted drive or indeed a FreeBSD one. And as you can see, it says FreeBSD boot, FreeBSD UFS and FreeBSD swap. So it instantly tells me it's the boot drive for the machine. On this workstation, I don't use ZFS. And for the storage drive, it's just a, a plain UFS uh, formatted drive. So another one that's extremely useful. 
And there's been quite a few times when I've discovered an old hard drive that I've taken out of the system and, you know, I've stored it away somewhere and thought, oh, let's have a look on that. A few uh, months later, and I've forgotten what's on it, of course, I can find out, ah, it's a Windows drive or it's a Linux drive and then put it in the, you know, into the appropriate machine and get it used. So, yeah, it's pretty useful. Next is Disk Info. There's not that many options on Disk Info, so, you know, you, uh, it's fairly easy to use. Go to disk info hyphen v for verbose and then on the first drive ADA0 will tell you all the information about that particular drive. It's information which you've seen in the other utilities so far but this one's you know it's simple to the point. And one thing I do like about this is it actually tells you whether trim is active and supported on the drive which is pretty cool. The first drive I have in this one is an SSD. Uh, if I show you the storage drive, which is just a normal spinning drive, you can see it reports obviously no for trim, but underneath it tells you the speed of the drive, which is 7200 and cylinder heads, etc. So that's actually um, so that's actually pretty cool. Another small one to use is SysControl, and if I just put kernel well, kern.disks, it will show you what's attached on the system, what's been assigned. In DA3, DA2, DA1, DA0 are your plug-in ones. ADA3, ADA2, ADA1 and ADA0 are all physical drives. Next up is Dev Info, which will uh, list information about the system device configuration. And without any uh, arguments it will show the hierarchy of the devices available in the system so there's quite a bit there so if you want to look at one particular device um, I'll go for the webcam audio and put dev info hyphen P which displays the path of the dev uh, UA audio and then for verbose, we'll give you all the information you need. To set up, uh, oh, I don't know, Webcam D if you need to put that in, or uh, set up your device daemon configuration. You've got your vendor information, your product information, which is pretty cool. I haven't needed to do this for a long time. I think I had to do it with a printer a good few years back, but it's there in case you need it. So if you list webcam D, which is not part of the uh, core system of FreeBSD, but I'm just gonna show you that it actually tallies up with information in that. So if you've got UGen 3.2, there's the webcam uh, mic. Next is PCI Conf. There's one or two options to be from there, but in this case we're gonna list uh, yeah, we'll go for the top one to go. PCI conf hyphen L. And then we'll just uh, we'll put these little toggles. And it lists quite a lot of information there. So I'll just uh, zoom it out. As you can see, there's a lot of information about the various attached devices, names, uh, PCI information. Well, it's quite interesting as well. It actually tells you the power limit, some of these uh, slots. Very useful. It's a great uh, diagnostic utility, really, for the PCI bus. It really is. Next is DMI Decode. Now, DMI Decode, I, I, dis well, I, you know, I found it a long time ago and exceptionally useful. It will give you one big lump of information. So if you just pipe it into, uh, I don't know, less, and then you can just scroll down at your own leisure. But that will give you everything from the boot, what's been found out, what the BIOS is detected, etc. It's pretty comprehensive, is DMI Decode. Uh, it gives you a lot of information. Again, you can you can filter it out to find specific pieces if you want.
So if you put DMI decode, oh, I don't know, um, for T, and you can search for type. If you want to search for, I don't know, BIOS, it will just give you the information about everything it's found out about BIOS. And that's it. Even down to the languages is pretty good. BIOS language information. <laughs> Uh, the best way to do that, really, is to use dmessage. Um, it will throw up everything that came up during the boot process. Um, it's a bit like DMI Decode, but a little bit less detail and all clumped together. But it's pretty comprehensive, and it's something which I've used again. Uh, look at that ACPI error. I'll have to work that one out, I think. Find out what's causing that. But it tells you everything which the system found out when it was booting. So, right to the beginning. The FreeBSD project, copyright 92 to 2019. So, D-Message uh, will throw up a, a lot of information. You can obviously pipe it into less, again. Just go down at your own leisure. in space to go down um, one line at a time if you need it we'll, uh, we'll quickly uh, skip past these ACPI errors never noticed them before very good it's also useful to find out if your uh, drivers are being loaded incorrectly Another thing we can do with D-Message is obviously uh, pipe it into grep and search for, like I've just said, driver information. There you are. This is the only thing it's found out about the NVIDIA and it's been attached properly. It even tells you what which uh, driver version it is. It's 440.82. Tells you about your memory, uh, real and available, and your CPU information. So overall, pretty useful is D-Message. You can, of course, uh, look at the source of the D-Message information if you want. That's how we look at the actual uh, boot log, which is really what D-Message just really displays for you. To a certain extent, um, I think it formats it a little bit better to look at it this way. But, you know, D-Message is pretty quick and simple. And like we did with D-Message regarding the uh, memory, you can just uh, grab or search for the memory uh, instance in this boot file. And there we go. Or do it quick and simple, D-Message pipe it, grep memory. So it gives you the same results. Next, um, a useful little, th little thing, back to syscontrol again, but it hyphen and then A, and then we'll pipe it into uh, into less just to sort of like calm it down. And this will list all the current um, settings of the kernel, really, as they are right now. All the variables and all the values and all the you know various bits and pieces which uh, is making your system run, which can be changed. It's not advisable to change everything, but it also gives you information about what uh, your system is using. Well, we could use syscontrol to change hardware parameters, uh, but we'll start off with ifconfig. Now, ifconfig, obviously, uh, if you've ever needed to configure manually uh, network settings in FreeBSD, will be what you use. You can change your IP address, assign a static, uh, change interface. So ifconfig lets you change the most essential things in your system if you want it to be networked. It's also a good place to find out if there's any problems too. So you can change the interface uh, address family. 
destination, etc. Or even set up a new connection if you need to. Yeah. Getting back to SysControl, it can actually do quite a lot of good things. Like, for instance, if I do probe the ACPI, it can show the supported sleep states of the machine, so S3, S4, S5. Um, it can help you fix if you've got, I don't know, um, problems with, say, for instance, a laptop not going to sleep properly or hibernation when you're closing the lid or when you shut it down. So you just uh, tell it to obviously debug the, uh, the process. The default is zero. If you put it onto one, it'll... It'll log stuff for you and suspend. So you want to find out what happens with the suspend process. Default is zero. One is activate it. Now this bit I'm not going to do because it'll it'll put my computer to sleep. Um, ACPI conf and then with the switches S3 it will simulate the uh, process of suspending and see if it works for you. And if there's any problems with it doing so, you can read it in the uh, the dig mode messages which will come up. So I'm just going to uh, going to reset them back to zero. So with Sys Control, you can find out a lot about what's running on your system. Also, you can change things or even debug. If you put one that doesn't, if you've misspelled it or it doesn't exist, it will come up with the unknown OID. And anything that you want to do with syscontrol, that you want it to stick or want it to be there when you reboot, if you put it into syscontrol.com. Like syscontrol, um, another useful one and powerful one is USB config. Now, we'll list all the attached USB devices. You can change the power settings of them, suspend, resume, etc. Um, you can do a lot of things to the attached devices. But you have to be careful because you can uh, make your system a little bit, a little bit jittery. So use USB config 3.2 is the webcam um, microphone. And if I use your power on, if it was off, then you can power on. Next is APM, which is the uh, the power management, really, side of FreeBSD. Because I'm not using a laptop and uh, it's not using the battery, if I put A for um, the current status of the battery, it'll give you 255, which really means uh, you can't find the battery. If I put B for, uh, I don't know, battery status, it'll give you either 0, 1, 2, or 3. And it's giving you 3, saying it's on uh, charging, which it's not, but it's because we're connected to the mains. And so yeah, it's pretty useful. And as we've shown a few times so far, you've got the Sys Control. Now, in its uh, simplicity, there's a lot of power. And well, yeah, I'll just give you a quick look at the uh, Sys Control Conf. Right. So yeah, and there you can actually, uh, you can switch, I don't know, some options off, like the kernel core dump, the software based of course. But there's other things that you can switch on, which can affect the hardware, uh, in particular. Uh, this one I always enable at 224, it's, uh, it gives a more responsive system. You can turn off the uh, bell, so you don't get a beep. And you can configure the memory so it works with uh, Chrome. A little bit easier and use amount of hard drives so uh, oh yeah and also make hard drives work a bit faster so you can also change the default sound um, config which is very useful I've had a lot of people asking about that so sys control you can change a lot of uh, things about your system but also the way it interacts with your hardware When you list the kernel modules that are currently uh, running the system, it's everything that your kernel is interacting with, like drivers, device drivers, etc. Um, as you can see, there's some in mine. It's mainly uh, there's a Linux one, maybe Linux ABI. So I can uh, use the Linuxulator, as they call it. There's the Nvidia one and the Sound ones, and yeah, there's the the Qs one that I can use for the webcam. So 
It's everything which is needed for your system to interact with your hardware. It's your loaded drivers, etc. Without them, you know, you're not going to get much done on this system. Um, if you haven't much need for them, or you haven't got the things that they're going to use, then there's no point in loading them up. And to get, well, not rid of, but to <laughs> unload one which perhaps you don't need, uh, it's KLD unload, and I'll unload this 64-bit uh, Linux one because it's not currently being used for anything. And if I've got KLD start, you can see the Linux one is gone. The only one that's available still is the 32-bit, which is just the Linux.ko. I can load the 64-bit Linux one back again. And we'll have a look to see if it's there. And it is. This time at the bottom, but it's there. If the uh, if the kernel modules are built into the system, as it were, then all you need to do is just KLD load the one that you want. And some people would advocate that if, say, for instance, it's one that came with a different program, like a device driver, uh, like NVIDIA, then maybe you give the full path. But I've, I've never really done that, and, he, and it seems to work fine. So if we look at the ones that comes with the system, you can see there's a, a lot there. These are the ones that come when you install FreeBSD, and they're there when you need them. Not there all the time, but when you need them, you can start and stop them as you wish. And there's a lot of uh, graphics card ones, some Radeons, uh, there's a lot of uh, Ethernet, and, and Wi-Fi, just general drivers that you need for the system. Because it's hard to say what hardware combination is going to be given to a system, so they put everything they can there. And if you look at the directory where uh, drivers have been, well, the kernel modules have been uh, placed after you install something, if you go to uh, boot modules, then this will show you what's been installed uh, by third party, really. These are added in uh, after. Like I say, I've never really needed to give a full path on this. I don't, you know, I, mind you, then again, I really don't use them, so I could be wrong, of course. And if you want to load up um, some NVIDIA drivers, there are two ways to get these, uh, both the ones that come with your system and the ones that are added later, uh, kernel modules uh, loaded up when you start the system. One way is to put an entry in the rc.com, the other one is to use uh, the bootloader.com. I think the KLD underscore list is the preferred way now that uh, FreeBSD should load it. Um, if you can see, it's, on this one I'm trying to automatically load the NVIDIA, the Linux and the mode set, as well as Fuse. The NVIDIA and the Linux one and the mode set is essentially if you want a uh, automatic GUI, really, without having to manual load up the module yourself. And if you go to the bootloader.com, and as you can see, there are some entries which uh, are loaded this way when the system starts. I used to put my NVIDIA ones um, in this one, but now I use the rc.com. Auto boot delay, which uh, speeds up the actual booting of the system, which is pretty cool. It's that little countdown from uh, 10 seconds. So I've got Fuse and uh, MSS DOS, etc. So yes, that's it really. Um, um, I've probably missed out a whole lot of different uh, instructions and commands which I uh, should have looked at. I more than likely forgot half of the stuff I was going to say. But this gives you a rough idea that FreeBSD, vanilla FreeBSD as it is, with no added third party, uh, has got enough tools built in in order to uh, look at your system, to get your system uh, some, get some troubled uh, sorted, to get it debugged, some bit of troubleshooting. 
but also just really to generally have fun with your system and really just to explore your system and to learn. But before you use any of the commands, especially the ones that can change devices, read up about them, uh, you consult the man page if you wish, look online in the FreeBSD forums, any of them things really, because I don't want to hear that someone has managed to wipe the entire drive or disconnect us of it mid-flow and, you know, they lose the data. So please be careful about the commands that you issue on your system. Right, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.